I am Raven Culler, the news director of the Rocky Mountain Collegiate, and I am sitting here today with Liana Kaplan, one of the four freshmen uh, who was in the photo that kind of rocked campus last week. So to start out, can you walk me through that day? Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, we all had like a pretty rough week, I would say. This is our second week on campus. We were just getting into the, the gist of things and everything, and um, a couple of my guy friends were all on the same floor. I would say we're all, we, we were pretty tight before everything that happened. Um, one of them knocked on my door while I was doing homework, like, hey, we got these free face masks. I was like, can you teach us what to do? I was like, sure, why not? So I uh, started putting one face, uh, face mask on one of them, started putting it on another one, and then they're like, hey, why don't we put it on you? So I got a face mask put on me, and then we all just did a face mask. And uh, we were just like, oh, this is great. We all have these charcoal face masks on. Look, we have some guys that have charcoal face masks on too. This is kind of fun. And uh, from there, like, okay, let's take a picture. And so um, from there, one of the boys said, uh, Wakanda forever. I was like, oh, okay, that's from the movie, right? That means brotherhood. That's what my, my mind automatically went to. And from there, um, we were like, oh yeah, the, the hands like this, that means like the brotherhood too. We're like, oh, that's cool. So we took a picture. It wasn't at all meant to be racist. We didn't, in fact, didn't even think about the consequences. We didn't even think about what this could lead to or how other people perceive it. We were like, we're just gonna share this with our family and friends. To be like, hey, we actually have a community that we're building at CSU. We're actually having fun. We're connecting with people in our dorm. And uh, overnight, it went crazy. This started, the whole situation, I would say, happened Sunday night about 9, 30, 10, and by Monday morning, everything was hectic. So you kind of touched on it, but what was the, the reaction you were hoping for mm -hmm. um, with the, the black face mask accompanied with the references to the mm -hmm. Black Panther movie? So I wouldn't necessarily wasn't, say, hoping for a reaction. It was mostly just like, okay, this is brotherhood. This is connecting. This is just a fun situation. Let's share it. Not once was I looking for any sort of reaction like, haha, this is funny, or this is negative, you need to remove it. There was no initial want or need for a reaction. Mm -hmm. Just kind of connecting with everyone else, sharing what was going on in our lives. Did it occur to you at all when you were kind of setting this photo up that it might have racial implications? Not at all. Not at all. So when was the first time you were approached by another student about the image being offensive? I actually wasn't approached by another student saying this is offensive. It immediately went to you are racist, you are a terrible person and everything. I would say if this did play out differently, I would have liked to have been approached this way because absolutely the situation could have been taken a different route. But not once as I approached and actually questions or asked or anything, it was just automatically boom, this is a title because you did this thing. So um, one of our reporters from CTV mm -hmm. spoke with the young lady who first put the image on her Snapchat and then on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and she said that she tried to explain to you why she thought it was offensive. Um, what was your take on that interaction? Uh, my take on the interaction, uh, this is all pretty vague to me, so uh, this interaction itself, because I believe at that point it was just all just being hammered. Um, my t intake on the interaction, if I believe correctly, was, okay, sorry that this was offensive. This was all meant fun and games. I'm sorry you took it this way. And then from there, it was deleted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on there for more than, I would say, two minutes. Gotcha. So would you, so was the timeline, um, she approached you about the image, and you deleted it, and then she put it onto other social media platforms? Correct. Correct. Gotcha. Um, so... What happened after you removed the image? Um, World War Three, I would say. It just, from every single angle, I was getting calls, I was getting texts. Um, I was, everything was just blowing up. And I didn't really understand why. I mean, I did ask a couple of my African-American friends, like my best friend is personally African-American. I was like, hey, does this come across to you as what people are saying? And she said, it really doesn't. I understand how it can, and I understand how people may have perceived it, but it doesn't come across this way. And um, we actually had a pretty long conversation about it. I had some conversations with some other people. I actually did some research on blackface and everything, too, and I was like, oh, wow, I see how this could have come across. Of course, initial 
um, an, an initial intent and how something comes across is super, super different. Mm -hmm. Like I could intend for something to be all fun and games, but if it comes across as someone, as something that's not, that's something completely different. And I completely respect that and I completely respect and understand the reactions that were made out of this. And um, I feel terrible that I did hurt people in the process. That's probably the worst thing for me is I understand I, I hurt people and I hit a sensitive topic for people and that that's I would say is the biggest learning opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. How did your friend react to the image? She said laughing emojis. She's like oh this is kind of funny like oh you guys are just joking around whatever there was nothing like oh okay that's not good. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like oh you guys are messing around all right. Right. Okay, so has the university itself approached you about the image? Yes I actually um I actually scheduled a time and I actually spent three hours last week I believe it was it was Wednesday or Friday I spent three hours with a couple of CSU admissions um, as well as uh, I spent with a couple people as well as someone who's part of the news of CSU excuse me and um, from there we discussed how this could have been approached mm -hmm. we discussed what's gonna be going on further from this we discussed how this was taken by some people and we discussed um, like things I can say to the public, things I can uh, bring about, things that I can say to make right in this wrong situation. And we were there for three hours, I actually missed most of my classes mm -hmm. because of that. So did it, was it that they were talking to you about how you could fix the situation or could aid in fixing the situation? Um, that's actually something I brought up. Mm -hmm. And from there we discussed routes, directions and everything. Mm -hmm. But I would say primarily we were just talking about the situation and how it was perceived. Gotcha. And mostly what was being, I would say, addressed was the death threats. Mm -hmm. They were making sure I was safe on campus. Right. Because I've collected every single one. I've gotten a total of 66 death threats, mm -hmm. all of them which have been reported to CSU Police Department and the Police Department. And I actually have a lawyer involved now due to the safety and everything. I do want to talk about the death mm -hmm. threats a little more, but I want to get through some other mm -hmm. stuff first. Um, did the university discuss any punitive actions with you when you had that meeting? Any punishments? Uh. Not really. I mean, again, I am, like the president said, I am protected by my First Amendment rights. I would say, I wouldn't necessarily say a punishment is necessary in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that we learn from our mistakes, and a mistake has been made, and from here, learning has to be made from it as well as a right. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say punishment has come from either karma or just around. Like, there has been things that have backlashed on me. Right. Um, from your opinion, how do you think that the university should reasonably respond to a situation like this? I would say talk to the person. I've been getting a lot of things over social media, a lot of things over a small screen. Mm -hmm. But there's, a, there's so much power, there's so much actual connection in a face-to-face. -face. Like you can, meet, you can see how someone's feeling, you can see their eyes, you can, you can see how they're actually feeling, you can ask personal questions, and you can, you can actually see emotion. You can feel emotion too. I feel like that's a lot more powerful. So with an email sent out, that's one thing. But if someone sends you an email like, I would like to meet up with you, I'd like to discuss the situation. I would say if this did happen, this did happen again, I would say, hey, why don't we meet up with that person? Why don't we discuss what happened? And from there, depending on the severity or what happened, go about that. But I'm in no means, <laughs> I would say I wouldn't put myself in the shoes of making like punishments or decisions from that because I don't know how to take it from here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I guess news, give me like one second. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't want this news. No, you're good. Um, so how has, what has the reaction from the campus community been to you? Um, from the campus it's been negative. It is, I, from my friends, from the people who actually know me, if people actually know that this was never a negative or hurtful or racial intent, they're there for me. Like, all right, we know you understood you did something stupid. I know I did something stupid. I'll be the first to admit what I did was ridiculous. Um, but they've been here for me, and that means a lot. They've been doing what we've been doing. They've been reaching out. Like, hey, how can I support you? Um, but around campus, since I am our first year, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say I know a lot of people. I wouldn't say I know a lot of like the niches and everything. So it's been very negative. I've had people yell at me going to my classes. 
I've had, uh, actually had someone throw something at me. I've had people contact me over social media and give me some pretty harsh words that way too. I wouldn't necessarily say it's all worth it. It's, it's been pretty negative. And how has that reaction affected you? Um, it hasn't really affected me. It's definitely opened my perception. Um, I understand how this could have been, this, how this is sensitive for a lot of people. Um, but it also really makes me question how people act towards the people who make mistakes or just people in general. Like, I've done a lot of research and things past this, and people are cruel. People aren't very nice to each other, and, they're immediate, and they immediately assume something. Based off the picture, it was assumed that this was racial intent, that this was blackface. It, it was a charcoal face mask that came across like blackface. blackface. Um, and with that, people are automatically assuming that I'm this awful person, but I'm not. And my friends know that, and the people who really know me know that that's not the case. And so with that around campus, it's just been this terrible person. You're awful. You shouldn't be here. You should be kicked off. But it's a mistake, and that's something different. Mm -hmm. So how has that kind of reaction gone in your residence hall? Are you still living on campus? Oh, yeah. I'm living on campus. I'm not going to let something like this take me down. How has the reaction towards you been inside your residence hall? We actually had a discussion last night. It was a two-hour discussion. We had a couple people from administration, a couple people of color actually be there, too. We actually had a floor discussion. It was like open Q&A. We got to talk about our feelings. We got to talk about everything. And if anything, there was more love than anything. There was understanding, and there was more support. Like, there was no pointing fingers. There was no backlashing. There was actually rams take care of rams in this situation rather than pointing fingers and saying slander. So what do you think the difference is between that conversation that you had in the dorm, the reaction in your dorm versus the reaction on campus C broadly? Because people know me. They can actually talk to me. They can see my face. They can see who I am. They can ask me questions. They can talk to me directly. They can know me for me rather than a picture, which is just a fragment of what happened. And that's, that's also super powerful, too, just knowing person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have you read the two emails from Joyce McConnell? Absolutely, yeah. What was your response to them, your reaction? Um, I would say that's pretty neutral. The university is one person, the law is another person, and I am my own person. Um, I would prefer if it was directed towards me, but I also respect that I was super vague just for um, our protection, the people in the photos, and also the university's protection. And I think it was, it was worded well. Both of them were worded well. They both gave options, they both gave explanations, but then they also didn't go too into depth and make people question too much. I was happy with the emails. Okay, so you released a statement, I believe, last Tuesday or Wednesday on Facebook. You yeah. have a short statement yeah. um, responding to the incident. Mm -hmm. Um, some people have criticized that response for being kind of dismissive. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? I actually released a total of four statements. The first three I've actually had to remove because there was so much, so many death threats, so much hate. I was like, we just got to start fresh. We got to reword this. The last one I released was telling my story. That's why I was titled my story. This was in no way supposed to make wrongs right. It was just a statement. It was telling my side of the story. Um, it was admitting to what I did wrong, and it was also saying, hey, some of the things people are saying to me are also wrong, and those shouldn't be forgotten as well. So I understand how it could be dismissive. It could also be targeting and also put me in the victim light. I'm not trying to victimize myself at all. I'm just saying, yes, I've hurt people, but in this process, people are also hurting me. So in one of McConnell's emails, um, she wrote, we know that images like this one, whether consciously racist or not, can perpetuate deliberate racism and create a climate that feels deeply hostile. Um, what do you think about that line? What's your reaction to that? Um, I agree with her. Um, yes, the image showed uh, racist, racial aspects, and it can create a hostile environment. That, and I emphasize can because that's just initially how it's taken and how people bring it past the initial picture itself. Like, a picture can hold a thousand words. It can hold more than that. And um, 
unfortunately, this picture showed a thousand negative words, maybe, and that that's that's really all it held. And um, I agree with what she's saying on that on that aspect. That yeah, it did come across that way, and is from what what we can do now that's going to make it better. Mm -hmm. So, how do you react to this incident being labeled as blackface? That, it's a title. It's like a title as, like me saying my pronouns or me being a miss. It's, it's just a title. Um, it was a charcoal face mask. I understand, yes, it's black. It was on my face. That's borderline blueprint what it was. Not once was it meant to be race, racist, but it did come across that way. Um, it was a charcoal face mask that went the complete wrong direction. And so I would say blackface is a little derogatory, but it also sums up the situation and how it was perceived. So it's, it's okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> what has happened between you and the boys in that image? So the boys actually have said some very hurtful things to me directly. They've said some things that I would like to not repeat, but they have also not stood up. I understand that their names haven't been released. And that's okay by me, because I don't want anyone else going through what I'm going through. Like I, even though they have said some hurtful things and they have said some things that I probably will never forget, I, I don't want anyone else going through what I'm going through because it sucks. It's awful, but it's just not fair to bring that on to someone else. I understand. Yes, I was not the only person in this picture, um, but I also don't want to put that on anyone else. Um, they haven't apologized either for the things they said, and I don't expect them to. I also expect they're boys rather than men, and they're not going to man up to the situation in some ways. I do feel very exposed being the only woman in this situation, the only one being targeted, at least from my perspective. Um, but I'm not going to let that overcome the situation itself. I mean, apology would be fantastic. I would love to reconnect and be friends with them again. but. I would say right now it is still a little hostile, mm -hmm. and until that healing can be done. Do these um, young men live in the hall that you live they in? They do, yeah. They live, one of them lives four doors down, and the other lives the opposite corner from me. Mm -hmm. So obviously people in your hall know who these people in the image are. Absolutely. Why do you think it is that your identity was released um, and has been kind of Because my name was associated with it. And these boys haven't been subjected to the same thing. True, but not once that anything that I've received from other people outside sources, no one said, who are these other people? It's been like, oh, you, your name's associated, let's attack you. Mm -hmm. would, would you like to release who those other people are? No, like I said, they've, I don't want anyone else to go through what I'm going through. I'd rather take it all myself than share the pain. So obviously there was an, another person there, the person who took the photo. There was more than just the person in the room. So how has this uh, incident affected the other people in the room who weren't in the image? I don't know. I don't, from what I've noticed, I don't think it's affected them at all. Mm -hmm. But then again, I also haven't talked with them. They've also kind of alienated me as well. Mm -hmm. And that's their choice. If I would love to talk with them and everything, but I'm not going to make the first move in this. Mm -hmm. So you kind of touched on this. Do you plan to stay at CSU? Who knows? I mean, my initial plan is actually to only stay here uh, two, two years, get my associate's degree undeclared, and then go uh, to CU Denver. Uh, CSU, I wouldn't say, has the best medical department, and um, I'm a nurse already. I want to become higher. Like, my dream is to become a doctor. And I'm not going to be able to get that PhD or that, uh, or that MD or even the MCAT practice, whatever I need at CSU. Um, I'm not going to let a situation kill my fire. I'm not going to let it kill my drive for knowledge, success, or anything. How do you see this situation affecting your future? Well, um, I had multiple people contact one of my jobs and they said, actually, we're going to bring this to a different light. A lot of people know what's, don't know what's going on, but there's this person, his name is Tay Anderson. He is running for, um, he's running for Denver District, uh, the Denver School District. He's actually using the whole situation as his campaign module. Every single one of his campaign members has sent me a death threat. 
this is why I have a lawyer involved. So with that, Tay Anderson actually contacted my work. And he said if I wasn't fired, I was, uh, he was going to sue the company. This is a multi-million dollar company, or billion dollar company. And so from there, I was released. But it's not going to, from there, I mean, that was, that was probably the most, the hardest thing I've heard. That, that enraged me more than anything. And um, yeah, it's permanently left scars on how people view me. It's permanently left scar scars on future employment and how I approach situations. But it's not going to, this isn't me. And it's not, I'm not going to hold the title racist because that's not who I am. So I do want to touch on how the specifics of how the backlash has affected you. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned you've received death threats. Oh, yeah. Your family's received death threats. Mm -hmm. um, if you were terminated from your job. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard reports that people were showing up to your work. Is that true? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I've been focusing on my school. That's probably what has happened. I could probably just send a quick text and find out right now, and they'd probably be like, yes. I would honestly, I would probably think people have been showing up to my work. People have been saying things to me in public, so why, why would they not show up to my work and all uh, that? So what have these death threats been like? Um, so a lot of them have been telling them to actually kill myself. Other people have been saying, um, like I actually have some that were fresh that I just got a couple hours ago. Um, I could go grab my phone if you want, and I could read those. Um, do, you, do you want me to do that? We can take a look at them after. Okay, we can do that. But um, most of them have been saying, um, you need to kill yourself. A lot of them are saying, um, I, me and my people, and, or some people I know, we're gonna, we know where you live. We know who you are. We're going to come, and we're going to kill you. And like, people like you don't deserve to live. Um, excuse my choice of words, but uh, you are... A racist <laughs> that I've received a bunch of those. I actually received one that says, "You've probably slept with every single boy in that picture." Um, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a racist, yada yada yada. Is things like that. Like I'm, um, like I'm, a <laughs> I'm an idiot and all that stuff. But I actually did have a call, uh, a call from an unknown number, and that's why I actually haven't been in communication with you because I had to turn my phone over to the police. Um, they said my name. They said my parents' names. Uh, they gave me my address. And I said, we're going to come up here and we're going to hurt you and your family because you guys are racist. And that's where I drew the line. Do you think that the reaction has been proportional? Absolutely not. Not at all. Yes, people make mistakes. <laughs> Everyone makes a mistake daily, I would say. Like misses an assignment or answers the wrong question or says something wrong to someone that irritates them a little bit. But in no situation does someone tell someone to kill themselves or that they're going to kill them. That is just slander. That is wrong. That is hurtful. No one should do that. How has this incident affected your family? My family shouldn't have to go through this. I actually didn't tell them about this because I was embarrassed and I knew I needed to make right. And I also knew that they, that their daughter shouldn't be viewed this way. And so once they did find out, they were heartbroken. They were heartbroken that people were actually saying these things to me. They're on my side. They know me. They also are, they admit, like me, that I did something stupid. But we also agree as a family that we can use this as a learning opportunity rather than slander and hurt someone else due to a mistake. They're here to support me. They're not here to defend me. And they're my family. I love them to death. So they're just, they're always going to be that shoulder there. So what are you doing now in response to this incident? So right now I'm actually talking directly with a few administrative people from CSU. I'm actually planning um, this week to be going and talking to a group. Um, it is going to be, from my understanding, a predominantly uh, colored group. And from there, it's going to be more like open Q&A. We're going to talk about viewpoints, how this came across, what we can do to fix it and everything. Uh, from there, I'm also, I released my statement, which is my side of the story. From here, I'm, I'm just trying to make wrongs right. If people have a question, I will answer it. But if people are gonna slander me, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna walk away from that point. But I will gladly have a discussion like this. I will gladly answer questions. I will gladly under, ha, help understand people from my perspective and understand where other people's hurt and emotions are coming from. 
So uh, besides what's going on later this week, uh, I'm, I've looked at some of the things the president has released, and I'm interested in attending some of those, just in honestly getting more, more knowledge in uh, blackface and everything itself, because I'm genuinely interested and want to know more. Those are all the questions I had planned to ask you. Are there uh, any other comments about the situation? Anything else you want to bring up? Um, I think the image speaks for itself, but that is not me. The pic people in the picture, it was a picture. It's, it's not us. We're actually great people. We, we love each other. We love ourselves, and we're not here to hurt anyone. It was never our intent, and of course it came across that way, and we, we are all so sorry for that. Um, especially me, because I'm here telling you that right now. I'm sorry for those I've hurt. I understand this is a sensitive topic. Um, and let's just, let's learn from it. Let's rather than hurt each other and keep going on this track of name calling and threats and everything, why don't we just, we build through this rather than break down, if that makes sense. All right, well, thank you so much for talking to me yeah, today. No, thank you. So through my high school years, um, blackface, we learned about it. We, I, wanted, I would say we learned like the blueprints, the basic things about blackface. We didn't really go into depth. Uh, from there, most of my research has been on my own with the situation. Um, not gonna lie, my high school history teacher, the one I had for American history is kind of crazy. And I would say it kind of jumped around and everything. Uh, but we, we skimmed it. I wouldn't necessarily say we went into depth like it should have been. Mm -hmm. But we, we got the general gist. So what do you think about kind of how they taught you about blackface mm -hmm. affected how you uh, kind of understood how this might be perceived before the reaction happened? We talked about blackface. We wouldn't necessarily say how it affected other people, how it hurt other people. We talked about it in a history standpoint. We didn't actually get the emotions from that. And that's what actually leads to the reaction is the emotions and how someone takes something. We just got, okay, this happened uh, in the 1800s. This happened in 1850. These were the people. Like, these are names you need to remember for the test. I wouldn't necessarily say we got, like, the people's perspective and how it hurt the people. And that definitely was a blind side to what was done. My lesson for fellow students in this is be careful what you post. Especially in such, um, such the time that I would say the world is in right now, a lot of things can be taken in a lot of different ways. We're in a very sensitive and also learning, like it's a sensitive learning phase for everyone. I wouldn't necessarily say this is just on campus. This is around the world. And be careful what you post. It could be all fun and games for one person. It could be super offensive and super demeaning to someone else. On top of that, talk to someone. There's a power in speaking and, of course, that person-to-person -person connection, that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I would say from that, don't be so quick to judge. People aren't here to hurt you, necessarily. People aren't here to be rude, cruel, or whatever. People are here, especially on this campus, to do what you're doing, learning, being a better person, meet new people. And not everyone is awful and negative and mean. None of us are perfect. No one is perfect, and that's just what makes us human. And of course, being human, we make mistakes, and we have to understand that everyone makes mistakes. And from there, we learn from those mistakes, rather than let those follow us around and doom us wherever we go. So kind of being the, the recipient of kind of the, the canceled culture or mm -hmm. kind of public shaming, uh -huh. um, how do you think that kind of public shaming has, has it been educational for you? Oh, no. Has it been constructive? How do you think that's kind of... The public that shaming, the things you. that people have been saying to me? Oh, that has been just straight awful. It's been awful. Like, ugh. Imagine someone saying, go kill yourself to you. How would that, for you, from your perspective, how would that make, how would that be a learning opportunity for you? That's not. That's just, that's just straight bullying right there. That's, that's awful. I don't think anyone should ever have to hear that, and especially multiple times a day. And from that, I don't think there's anything that can be learned from what people are saying. If you're, ta if you're explaining to me how this is hurtful to you, how this affects you, what your emotions are, that is something completely different, and I will listen, I will respond, I will talk to you about it. 
But if you're just pointing fingers and saying hurtful things, there's no learning opportunity there. That's just temporary gratification for one end of the party. So this one is actually from a CSU student. Um, I looked at the profile. It says, I hope you get jumped by a, bro a group of black girls. Your statement doesn't mean either. Can't take back what you already done, you piece of white privileged ass. I wish CSU f***ed you over and kicked you out, but no, you're a stupid ass and you are just white privilege. I hope you kill yourself. And if not, I hope someone else kills you. You probably banged all those dudes, you f***ing That was from a CSU student. And that was received at 11.55 this morning. So this one uh, was from 12.02 a.m. You are a racist bitch. Go kill yourself. Um, and this one was received uh, today at 12 o'clock. You are a deprived little racist c who needs to be killed by yourself or someone else. Um, you white b you thought it was cute to show yourself in blackface on social media, huh? It's fun and just starting for you, little racist b How does it feel, you little So there seems to be kind of a, a theme you kind of talked about. Uh, the difference in response between you and the boys in the picture yeah. based on your gender. Um, a lot of those death threats had a lot of veins of kind of... Uh, female. Yes. It's this all female directed. If someone says you guys, that's completely different. That was directed towards me. Why do you think people are kind of doing very female specific threats against you? That's something I don't know. Um, my only guess is females in society are portrayed as weak, as someone who shows a lot of emotion, and they believe they're going to get a reaction out of me. Yes, they will get a reaction. It's not going to be negative. It's not going to be some of the things they said. It's going to be making wrongs right. It's going to be bringing forth what I've done wrong and making a positive reaction. They're not going to get a response from me saying, I'm sorry I hurt you. You are yada, yada, yada. I'm, you're, you're not going to get that. Because I'm not that person. I don't believe that negativity needs to be passed on. Like I said, that's is why I won't leak the boys' names. I'd rather take it all myself than share that anger and those feelings with someone else. That's why I won't, I won't bring forth another hateful comment. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm guessing there's, they want a reaction. You're not going to get it. This is kind of a lot like 9-11. They wanted a reaction. They got it. They made things worse. They made a war eventually. I'm not going to make a war. I'm going to accept what I did was wrong. I'm going to learn from it, and I'm going to make better. Oh, yeah, lots of people have been reaching out and supporting me. A lot of these people are actually from the African-American community. I've kind of been looking at some of the people that have been sending me some of the things, some of, the, some of these awful things. A lot of the awful things are actually coming from people who are not of color. They're just, they're people like me. And a lot of people from, of color have been approaching me and saying, yes, what you did was stupid. I'm not here against you. I'm here to support you. Why don't we make, why don't we make wrongs right? And uh, some people have been reaching out. I would say 10% has been positive, 90% has been negative. Besides my friend group, uh, there have been some great people on my side. But I'm not trying to take sides here. I'm not trying to ask someone to take sides just trying to get the whole situation resolved.